After the conclusion of UFC Fight Night 125, MMA fans were upset at a decision made on the card and it didn't involve the judges, but rather referee Mario Yamasaki. The event in question was Valentina Shevchenko versus Priscilla Cachoeira. Not only fans, but UFC president Dana White expressed his displeasure and even wished for Yamasaki never to step foot inside of an octagon again. Yamasaki has been criticized in the past for allowing fights to go too long, putting fighters' lives at risk multiple times, but there are also other people that could carry partial blame in this incident, and it would be remiss of me not to mention who. The first party to carry partial blame could be the UFC matchmakers, which in this case happens to be the Brazilian MMA Athletic Commission or CAB MMA. In my pre-fight rundown video, I specifically stated how I felt it was a mistake to put this match together. I felt that we could see a repetition of the mauling we witnessed in Habib Narmagomedov versus Edson Barbosa. As expected, it was a complete mismatch that in reality shouldn't have come across their desk in the first place. The second party to carry partial blame here are the coaches as they too serve as a line of defense for their fighter. They know their fighter more than anyone else in the sport. They see them spar and train on a regular basis and have a very good gauge as to how their fighter is responding to different stress factors. They must have a symbiotic relationship with their fighter in order for them to perform optimally in the cage. In this case, her coaches received several cues to stop the fight but chose not to. The first was the mauling Priscilla received while standing toe to toe with Valentina in round one. The second was the mauling she received on the floor as well. Priscilla already demonstrated that she was outclassed in both areas. At this point, it was quite evident her risk of ruin was high. And thirdly, Priscilla can be heard telling her corner on the stool between rounds that her knee was damaged and her coach did not consider it a factor. The team later released a statement stating that they were unaware of just how serious the injury was, as it was later revealed that she suffered a torn ACL and meniscus. Although we have seen numerous fighters injure themselves and come out winning. A prime example is John Jones finishing Chell Sonnen back at UFC 159. He won the fight with a broken toe that he suffered late in round one. As much as we would like for a fighter's corner to take precautions and have a fighter's safety in mind, it's actually very uncommon to see a towel being thrown into the cage. It also has a lot to do with the fighter wanting to go out on their shield. Jones later admitted about his corner with the coaching staff that I have to be dead honest with you I don't think they would have allowed me to dwell on it too much they probably would have tried twisting on it and making me go back out there that's the name of the game try to live like a warrior be a warrior and unless I go through crazy stuff like that I'll never know how much of a warrior I can be this is what Priscilla suffered from a warrior's mentality by the beginning of the second round the mauling continued and this is where I feel the corner should have thrown in the towel after realizing that their fighter was no longer capable of launching any type of offensive attack especially equipped with the knowledge of her knee being compromised. Ultimately, statistics showed that she received a total of 230 shots and only connected three. However, Priscilla later revealed that she would fight Valentina 10 more times without thinking twice and added, she who chooses easy battles is not a real warrior. She also blamed no one but herself. Valentina gave us her perspective when she was on the MMA hour with Ariel Hawani. She said that Mario Yamasaki asked Priscilla to move, otherwise he would stop the fight. Valentina said that at this moment, Priscilla began to move. She explained that Yamasaki had the standard pre fight locker room chat with both fighters explaining that in order for him not to stop a fight due to strikes, you need to be moving and attempting to get out of danger which she did attempt and the reason why Yamasaki did not stop the fight. Yamasaki later released a statement thanks to MMA fighting and said, during the second round I signaled to Pedrita that if she didn't move I'd stop the fight and every time I'd stop I told her and she moved to try to escape from the punches. Unfortunately, I also can't control the number of blows thrown. Again, when a fighter is trying to come back, she's game. Fighters go through times of hard effort and dedication to be there. MMA is a contact sport and no fighter likes his fight to be stopped with no chance to revert the result. In my opinion, I allowed Pedrita to be a warrior and keep fighting. I could have stopped the fight in the second crucifix or in the mount, but she moved the whole time. I also recognized that I should have stopped when she tapped the first time to the rear naked choke. I only stopped a few seconds later. After the event took place, referee Big John McCarthy and Mark Goddard had their opinions. Big John referenced a time when Nate Diaz was getting pummeled by Josh Thompson and his brother Nick threw the towel in out of love and care for his brother. He said corners should also demonstrate demonstrate that equally to their fighters. And Big John also said, absolutely, it is a corner person's responsibility to know their fighter and be there for their fighter. They know the fighter better than anyone. Most will not take responsibility for ending the fight because they are concerned with what their fighter will think. He also listed his criteria in determining whether a fight should be stopped. John never came out and gave a direct answer as to whether the fight was stopped late, but instead chose to take a neutral stance. Mark Goddard's opinion was, a one-way beating is a one-way beating, allow time of course, but absolutely stop that fight if nothing is coming back 
the other way. I've stopped the UFC championship fight on the same grounds. As far as the corner involvement, he said, make no mistake, when I ref, I am in control. However, I'm talking about a corner's intervention. I don't necessarily need that. If I act, I will act, but it is a corner's job also to know when a fight is not competitive. Their input is invaluable and warranted. So who do you think holds the most blame here? The matchmakers, the fighter, the corner, or the referee? Or do you feel they all share equal parts of responsibility? Do you think Yamasaki deserves to be penalized in some way? Let me know down below. As always, guys, if you like the video, make sure to hit that like button for me. If you're new, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date. Thanks for watching.